Welcome to the second episode of this Cool Family Initiated Podcast and Family Journaling Session, where we discuss things from a normal Malaysian family's perspective and view of things that affects us and possibly you. A podcast by family, for family, friends, and to simply anyone who loves or despises their family. All right, so... Yep. Uh, great to be back uh, on the second episode. So I think um, this episode, second episode, we're talking about heavy topic, a heavier topic, but I think uh, is which is very important. The topic is aging. So aging itself, I think is a huge topic. A lot of things to talk about. A uh, reason why we are pick, uh, picking this topic uh, and uh, we're having two special guests today. Uh, actually, one of them is our host, mom, and our very VIP, dad, who is always very busy. Thanks for joining us. And um, I think the reason why you are bringing this up, because I think yesterday, I understand that both of you have just gone um, to a film festival at the Hin Bus Depot in Penang, in Georgetown, and you all went for a documentary called Grayscale. Um, so can we talk about uh, actually why, how do you find out about it? And actually, why did you uh, go for it? And uh, yeah, let's start with that. Yeah. Well, it was recommended by mom who found out about it from a friend and then she registered for both of us. So I thought it would be uh, very timely to take some time off from your own, my, my normal busy schedule uh, to spend some quality time with her. At the same time, well, uh, listen to what they have to say about aging, which is very relevant to us at this present age, at our age. Mum, anything to say? It was recommended by a friend from Asset. And uh, I, all the while, I've been very interested in the topic about aging because I myself, I'm aging. And very fast after menopause is going to, it's like a slope down. So I'm glad that we went because uh, we hear a lot of uh, news about what we then plan for aging people, aging population. And this Bidang is an aging uh, society. So it was a very interesting documentary, two minutes documentary, 20 minutes, sorry, by a very... So she's not a director by profession, but she's a researcher. So she did this documentary. The lady in the documentary is her own aunt. So she, the interesting part was she had to spend one year documenting her for just this 20 minutes documentary. She got the first prize, I think in the Freedom Film Festival in Malaysia. I think she deserve it very much. It's an eye-opener, like, very interesting. I think yeah, all the people should, aging people should watch. So, yeah, so uh, you said that it was a documenting of uh, uh, the life of a perspective of a, uh, her aunt, right? So actually, what, what, what was shown in the 20 minutes, uh, roughly, you know, just to give a summary, a gist of it. Well, uh, it tells about Irene, her aunt, and the uh, researcher is uh, Evelyn Che. And it's a personal touch. The, the thing relates to us is also because uh, it is in the vicinity of Georgetown. I believe the aunt is staying in one of the very old houses along Siam Road or Siang Tek Road area. And uh, when the documentary interview is done, you could see a lot of familiar sites of Georgetown, uh, which is where we were, we, were, we were born and bred over here. So it, it does show a very uh, a connection. And I find it very touching in the sense that it is related, it is very well done. It kind of uh, stirs up our interest. It stirs up our realization that indeed uh, aging can be a lonely process that one goes through. And initially, the film uh, was just filming about her alone at home, all alone. And sometimes we were having lunch, and you see a chichak on the on the wall. Then you see a cat, you know. So it shows the loneliness uh, of a, a person. Uh, the aunt is about 80 years old, but she is bodily able, both mentally and physically. physically. So she is able to handle her, herself a lot of things, very independent. Very, very interesting uh, documentary. And the, the other good thing is also because it relates to her aunt, so we are able to see uh, the connections. Not Normally, when you when one films these such documentaries, uh, the, the elderly will be a little bit apprehensive in sharing this. But because it's her aunt, and the way it was approached and put forth, uh, we find it uh, very unique. Yeah, uh, okay. It, so, hmm? yeah, go ahead, Rooney. Was it the screening that 
that was followed by a Q&A and a discussion after that? Yes, yes. In fact, they before they show this, they showed another, I think also winning uh, entry, but it's, it's a Malay kind of a senior citizen home. So it's a, it's a good comparison between whether you are aging in a home or you are aging on your own. So they did a comparison. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh? You were asking, sorry, Sherry? Coco, if you don't mind, I what, what, what I was very curious about was after watching that, when you were watching the two documentary, how did that make you feel? No, see, I'm already aging. She just asked me the question, but I forgot the question. Okay, <laughs> I, 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 it, it's just a 20 minutes documentary, but then the Q&A lasted, I think, more than 45 minutes. So a lot of questions were asked. And then we were lucky that the, a counsellor from MPPP was there. And then a doctor, doctor in uh, ger- geriatry, what do you call it? People taking care of uh, uh, in and also dementia. Geriatric, yeah. Geriatric mm-hmm. and also she specialized in uh, dementia. She was also there. So she, both of them gave a very, very good good picture of what, what the government should do. So the Q&A was very effective. And then a lot of young people also give their inputs, their perspective. So, so a lot of young people actually showed up, yeah? Which is good. I think I think maybe thirty percent out of hundred percent. Yeah, it sounds good. Like it's actually quite a up and coming topic, and that we have the young involved. Because usually, I mean, this kind of documentaries and this kind of topics, I I used to think that not many young people want to go and watch. But it's good that sign that you know there's a yeah, quite a community involvement in this. And so I mean, if there's something else to add, if not, I wanted to ask is. What about what? What's your takeaway coming back from it, uh, the documentary and the discussion for both of you, mom and dad? Well, uh, I I like the part about how the whole show started before it shows the actual documentary, Grayscale. Uh, as what mom says just now, uh, it shows a a life in an old folks home. Uh, it started with a Muslim lady saying that she started with her own funds and started to care for for the old people. Uh, and then you can see that uh, a community living in old folks' home, some are bedridden, and some of them, how they turned up there was because uh, the family members just dropped the, the father over there and then uh, left him over there. So as a result, this this kind lady picked it up and then nurse the person back. So you can see a, a community living in old folks' home where some are bodily able, some are bedridden, and they need to care for them. So that shows a very, some of them are in a rather pitiful state, but uh, she managed to cope with it and never been happy. That's, then after that, we went to the, the grayscale proper, whereby this Irene lady, live bodily able, but living independently uh, by her own. So you can see the different perspective, you know. Uh, when you grow old, if you go to Ofo home, this is how the environment is, you know, in, in, in terms of community living. Another perspective is when you grow old, you're bodily able, you live on your own, and uh, you live in Georgetown, and how you fend for yourself. Different perspective, but it's, it sends a very strong message, especially on the gray skill, that the person aged, the person is old, but bodily able, but the person lives with dignity, you know, and uh, wants to be independent, even though they may have family members uh, or decent relatives visiting them often, but they want to be as independent as possible. And they want to live with, with dignity and self-respect, and they want to be uh, uh, productive. So that's very touching, uh, very touching for us, you know, and uh, it gives a lot of reflection, oh, this is how life is when a person gets old, and this is a process of life, but eventually everybody gets old. And eventually, you either well go to Ofok home and live with a few people, community living, or you see able, then you live on your own. And this is how it is. It's a fact of life, you know, and it's an end point that, that everybody has got to come to terms to. It's a matter of time. And for us, because we have reached that, that, that stage whereby we are getting nearer and nearer by the day, so it has very profound impact or realization. That just now you mentioned because it's getting nearer. That's why you you feel it's a topic that that's close to your heart. I I'm curious when did you start to think about aging as an as a topic? When when do you start having perhaps conversations with yourself about aging? Well, a couple of things that prompted me. Uh, first is the uh post retirement. I retired. I chose for an earlier retirement uh a few years ago. 
So one is post-retirement that gives, then during this post-retirement period, it, it kind of gives you a certain different feeling that you are in a different, look, you are moving to a different phase. Second is when children are growing up, you know, you're working and out of Penang and the anti-nest syndrome will sink in, you know, that you only have mom and myself and, and grandma. Third is that uh, you look at the departure of elderly relatives and friends. Ah Kong pass away, Kong Kong pass away, Tua Ipoh pass away, and some of the friends pass away. Then you can see that uh, different people are living at different time. Uh. The fourth would be a kind of a hard impact with uh, COVID-19 and pandemic, whereby we are all into MCO, you know, and all of us are locked in together. Then you see a lot of un uh, unhappy news in the newspaper, people dropping dead on the streets, you know, and on the clinic, etc., you know, and people are dying and it can happen to anybody anytime. So it reminds us of the, uh, fra how fragile life is, you know, and how mortal we are. And of course, the last one would be my analogy of a choo choo train, uh, whereby, you know, I, I can go back at a, a different time. So, so with all these things coming in, uh, one after the other in the period of last two or three years or four years, then it makes, for myself, it makes me realize that, wow, uh, I'm really reaching this this period, this phase of my life that I have got to come to terms with. Lah. And how best to come to terms with would be uh, a lot of reflection. Lah. Mom, anything from you? Okay, I can. Uh, the takeaway from the documentary is you have to stay healthy in order to live alone. That's very important. And she, at one point, she could not stroke, you know. She, nobody was in the house. She could not stroke. A mouth stroke, I think. Then then she, she got to call the sister emergency ambulance, took her to hospital. So important is stay fit. When did I think about aging? Is at the time when I took care of Kong Kong. So that's my eight, seven years ago. So I took care of Kong Kong. I see all the, all the problems. Oh, not only he himself, is very, uh, I think he his ego is also hurt. So he's fat and people taking care of him also feel very tired sometimes. And then followed by Popo, Popo fell down. Then now Ama. So you see so many old people around you. Uh, so you still always remind yourself that, oh, one day I will may become like this. So that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the alarm. No? That, that was the alarm. Yeah. So I uh, I think that's a nice perspective uh between mom and dad. I think thanks uh for the input. It's just that I think it's interesting because for dad he mentioned that probably because he was a working adult all his life, right? So he's probably had like phases that you know it's a clear demarcation when he stopped work. You sort of a I guess some people lose a sense of purpose in their life or that routine and everything that might kick in. So I think it's interesting that mom because you are you you stopped working earlier than that. So I think it's interesting that the phase of aging actually kicks in at a different phase, right? When you're caring for uh, Kong Kong and all. So I guess, can I add in a point from my perspective? I think this is a nice juncture to add in because for me, because I'm in healthcare, I care for, you know, that that's my job, right? So I see aging even earlier, even at the start of my career. Actually, the past few years, I've seen aging and I know that I'm also aging. Even at the, my, in my 30s, I already feel that aging is setting in in different senses. Uh, in different forms. And um, and the fact that you said that, you know, you, you have to stay fit and stay healthy, that's definitely one. But I think I also like to remind you, mom, I, as I've told you before, so briefly mentioned to you, that as much as we want to control our health, there's only so much we can control. Because sickness and aging and all, it's just a part of process. And I think what what sometimes is, like what you mentioned is ego. That is uh, sometimes a, a big a hurdle for people and causes more misery than actually aging itself should be, I think, personally. Because I think that the important key fact is the acceptance of it. That I think from my line of work, I think that it all happens to everybody, even people who are the fittest, who regularly jog, go for walks and everything. Sickness still comes, no matter you like it or not. So the sooner we accept that and say that, you know what, there might be the time that I, no matter what I do, that I'll still be dependent on carers and everything. So I think that is a big uh, topic that I actually I think should be more discussed more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I absolutely agree, especially on the part of acceptance and not inflicting guilt upon ourselves for things that's inevitably will happen in in life. And 
So on, on that note, my, my observation with mom and dad's process or the growing significance of the topic of aging in their lives between mom and dad like I said because dad for the most part of his life he was working and it's always very busy and even post-retirement you had all your other extracurricular curricular activities which kept you very busy and it- I think uh, to give people context also uh, when because people other people who listen to this might not understand what extracurricular would mean. It might sound that dad, dad is out there having fun, you know, drinking or whatnot. Not to say anything wrong with that. I think we better put it in context that he's actually doing meaningful, charitable uh, NGO work in uh, yeah. Buddhist societies and uh, whatnot, yeah. right? And one of the things, <laughs> one of the things was effectively running the senior citizen home in the Penang Buddhist Association. Exactly. I think uh, there's there's no better person to have here as well because not only as a, uh, as a dad's perspective, you're also running a senior citizen's home. What, what, what's your... I mean, I'm sure there's some aspect and perspective that you have learned from that as well, right? Carry so, on. Uh, carry so, on. so what the, the observation that I was making just now was that uh, mom and dad had a different pace of coming to terms and, and sort of processing... Uh, aging and and both mom and dad were caregivers for aging parents um and until today both of them still are i think when you are a caregiver and then you start to realize you yourself are also aging that transition from purely seeing yourself as a caregiver and, and then now seeing having a new dimension of oh i'm i'm also aging myself that i i, I assume that turn will ignite all this thinking about oh when when I get older what kind of age parents or age person I want to be and what kind of support um support system whether physically or emotionally I hope to receive. So I guess my my question is what is the support as you see your parents age or or that when you in when you see the old people in the old folks home for yourself what as you age what kind of support do you wish for, hope for, one for, for yourself? Well, I suppose uh, because I'm always busy, I use the, the I, I kind of uh, run away from reality many times because you keep yourself busy, you don't do a lot of introspection like what mom does, right? And then you kind of uh, just ignore it and then change the subject very, fairly easily. However, uh, as the years goes by, I notice that my reflexes are not as good I uh, am not as uh, as healthy, as strong. For example, last time I could sleep for about four, three or four hours. Then the next morning, I'm still okay. But now that if I were to miss my sleep, then I can feel very lethargic. You can see that the body, in reality, is really sending you a message that you are getting old. You know? and, and that gives you that, that reflection. Number two is that uh, caring for a Kong, etc. also gives me the realization that... Uh, Getting old, especially for Akong, etc., you know, and in their generation, they don't talk much to their children. They don't express much. But from their body language, you also know that uh, there's certain pride, there's certain self-pride, you know, and certain dignity. So when you grow old, we kind of, uh, you know, we want to, not to say we want to uh, patronize them, but we want to respect their self-dignity and their, their self-pride so that uh, the age with grace that's very important you know? and it gives me a recession that my time will come my turn will come I wouldn't know whether I'm going to live as long as, as long as my dad but then if I do then I like to be as healthy as possible right and mom always gives me that uh, reminds me that you know, you're very meticulous you're very you're very careful of cleanliness etc but you have got to get used to the fact that moving forward in case you are not that body able you have to do a lot of compromises then that gives me a realization. Oh, yeah, it's true. You know, when I grow old and if my body is not really ever, not bodily, then I will be a prisoner in my own body. And I want to be very clean. I want to be very meticulous, but my body may not support that. Then the frustration will grow inside that you want to do what you can't do. Your bodily you can't do, but you got to come to terms as early as possible. Not to be so particular. Not being so. Uh, fussy about things, etc., and try to accommodate that so that when the time comes, hopefully it doesn't come to that. You know, uh, all of us pray and hope that time for us to go, we can go gracefully, quickly, and it doesn't cause much trouble to our next of kin and ourselves. But 
there's not something that we can choose. We can hope for, but it's not something, not a choice. Uh, you know? But then if it comes to that, then we have got to accept that. Uh, and learning to accept that would be a challenge. So I guess, I think, uh, I from what I, I hear you say, um, so it is sort of, you under, you accept that as you age, maybe you're definitely your priorities and even your expectations of what you, you are, there's, uh, you need to, for example, compromise on certain things that you used to like and want and you probably have to give up certain uh, things. Is that what you're saying, I guess? Yeah, that's what I hear, you're right? Yes, I have high expectations on myself and others. Uh, so I'm very meticulous. So in I age, I suppose I have got to keep on reminding myself that uh, that I cannot be as perfect, as meticulous as I wish to be. And uh, the faster I come to that realization and compromise, the better it is for me. Because that is the reality. So you're saying uh, you might have to change as you age instead of expecting other people around you to change to suit your fixed ideals of life and whatnot. Yes, indeed, it is true, but it's easier said than done. La. Again, I know it's tough for me, and I've got to try harder on that. Yeah, okay, okay. What about mom? Yeah, what, what do you think, mom? Okay, for me, I'm more realistic, la, huh? or rather pragmatic, la, because uh, Lao Ping Si cannot escape, definitely cannot escape. So for my preference, so now I'm starting to learn to Tuan Li, Okay, that means cut, give away, and leave. Oh, I mean, don't know what how to say. Anyway, so it's you have to cut all your the hobbies that you think that you cannot do when you're old. Now the first thing is gardening. So uh, earlier I did a lot of gardening. Uh, you don't gardening have to gung here, gung there, carry here, carry this, all this cannot already. So I now I cut down all my gardening really. So. It's just one example, okay? So, like that is it, some you just have to slowly, slowly get rid of all the things that you are so used to that you, you think that you may not be able to cope when you're older. Even Not but, even older, even now already, cannot cannot cope really. But if, if it's something that you are still able to do now and you have, you, you can still enjoy it in, a, let's say, next few years or next decade, why, why deprive yourself from it. So the problem is I cannot cannot do ready now. That to oh, okay. to, to 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 carry stuff la, carry the soil la, and all that. So I I think it's 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 easier it's easier if you, you can do it earlier lo. I, mean, I think you'll you'll be more prepared. Lo. So the preference of course I think you won't hear anybody saying that hey, when I'm old I want to, uh, but there are people saying that I want to be alone. But of course, people with children, they will prefer to get old if their children are around. So the preference, the stages will be, first of all, if the children are around near you, you can stay with the children, of course, good luck. But no choice, then you have to be healthy and stay alone. If really no choice, then have to go to a, 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 a so-called high-class old folks home. If financially cannot afford, you have to go to the sort of... Uh, Social welfare, old folks, some there's facts of life already. These these are the things that you have to accept, no? You have to accept because even if let's say, if it, even if your children can accept you to stay with them when you're old, can take care of you, but if they are staying overseas like Coco, you you cannot afford to fly fly here, fly there. So I think by the by the time you're old, is is a problem to fly. Not to say 14 hours. A few hours are so problem with really. you. So it's just me. It's to me, it's just have to accept facts of life. Lo. About the pride one, I'm, I'm, I agree 100%. I, my pride is very high. I, I, I try not to let people take care of me. I really don't like people to take care of me. Okay? So that one I have to learn to, to accept. Lo. Goko always scold me for that. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm not scolding you. Uh. I'm just <laughs> sharing with love, okay, with love. <laughs> but I, I actually don't think, in, at, at least in your case, Mom, I really don't think it's pride and Coco agree with me. I, I think it's because you're, you're so, one, you're harsh on yourself 
and you set such a high standard of self that you don't want to inconvenience people, especially people that you care about and you love. You don't want to inconvenience them. I, I don't know whether it's just a matter of semantics, it's a pride or not a pride, but I really, we can see that, that that's where you come from. That, that, that's where that, that sense of independence come from. But about this ideology of accepting that it's going to be part and parcel. We have to accept the physical limitations that comes with aging and all other forms of limit or, or, of limitation that comes with aging. The part that I think I've always that I always couldn't agree with you is, um, and, and I think you spoke to me about this at, at a very young age, maybe 15, 16, which I couldn't understand then, is that I think you you go through phases where you feel like. Um, you need to learn to let go. You can't be too attached with your children. And I agree, we, we perhaps shouldn't be too we shouldn't be too attached to anything or anybody for that matter. But your idea is I should start to let go and be more and more detached with my children so that uh, when the day comes I, I I can let go better. I won't suffer as much. That that was something that I couldn't agree with you then and I, I, I guess I don't agree with you now. Maybe it's a form of my denial but I just feel that for whatever time that I have on earth or whatever time that you have on earth I, I would want to cherish that I you call me a mama's boy or mama's girl I, I don't care because I love being that close with with you with, with dad with Kuku I don't mind suffering when we need to part one day I don't mind suffering. I, I I wouldn't sacrifice being attached and close to you and love you the way I want to love you just so that when the day comes, it becomes easier. That That's something, that, that's I think where I differ from your ideology. No. Uh, what, what, do you, what about you, Coco? No, I think, I think it's doable. I think it's, this is in line with because mom is a more, I believe she's a very developed Buddhist uh. Uh, person because um, I think you're, you're, you're talking about attachments right but I think it's doable you know to be totally passionately in love and have strong relationships with your family yet be able to not cling to attachments basically just being in the present like when we have this I totally cherish this enjoy this to the most the love that we have everything but also always cognizant and reminding ourselves at this could go anytime but if anytime this comes i'm totally fine with it because i'm happy and grateful for whatever i have i think it's totally doable these two things being not too attached but at the same time being fully immersed in all our relationships i think it's totally doable ah yeah yeah i think coco coco understanding is is better uh, nearer to my we of course i still love two of you and that also but but not in the way say that that's why, you know, every, not to say every morning, but almost every day, certain time of the day, I, the question will ask me, if I go now, can I let go of the, especially two of you, can I let go of two of you? So I sort of contemplate on that almost every day because I know for a fact that two of you are, sorry, <laughs> the most, the, uh, I cannot let go. So, I must learn to let go. In that sense. Uh, not to say that I uh, I don't talk to you anymore. It's just that the I know for a fact that if the, the moment comes, these are the things that will linger in my mind. So, I will ask myself, okay, which part of you that you cannot? Mm. So, maybe the attachment has a, a, a many layers of meaning. So, uh, I hope because I'm also grateful, because you are grateful, I think we should start the Gratitude Day recording, a uh, journal, uh, Gratitude Day uh, that started by Sharina. We should go back. So I'm very grateful that two of you have have grown up well. That's why I always ask myself, which part of you cannot let go? Earlier, the part that, oh, they, they will not grow up well, they are not getting a proper job, or their, their life has problems. Or something. But that part is already... I think it's past already. So two of you are quite stable with your job, your relationships and all that. So which part that I cannot let go? So that is the thing that I'm contemplating every day. So 
if I ask myself, if I tell myself, if I, like you say that like, introspect, if I ask myself more, I believe one day I will come and come to a realization, eh, there's nothing that you cannot let go about them. So that part I have to self-introspect more. Mm. So Shireen, don't worry. The love is still there. It's the kind of attachment on the part of, let's say, one day suddenly one of us disappeared. Can we carry on our life still with peace and joy and harmony? Uh, the, the cliche part is, uh, of course, your mom, if, I, I, if I'm gone, of course, because cliche part, people will say, your mom wouldn't want you to be sad and all that. Same thing that vice versa, if you, you happen to, happen, something happened to you, people will tell me, hey, your, your daughter definitely don't want, or your son definitely don't want you to be sad, crying every day like that. Something like that. No? So can I do that? Or not? Will, will I be able to do that? So that one have to do daily contemplation. Just like contemplation on death every day. No? Yeah, I, I, I wasn't, my, my fear wasn't that the love's not going to be there and all that because I think I struggled with that when you were going through the initial phase of trying to detach and all that. That initial phase was difficult for me to adjust. I know eventually you sort of found a middle ground and a more balanced sort of um, dynamic for us. But in the initial phase, phases, that was when I couldn't uh, really agree. But I, I, I see where you're coming from, Mom. And, and thanks, for, thanks for sharing that and op- always being very open to share your fears, your emotions, your worries for us so that we don't have to... I think that a lot of times that makes, us, makes it a bit easier for us because um, when it comes to aging parents, I, for me, one of my biggest fear is not knowing the emotional struggles that y'all go through, worrying that because y'all are concerned that we are too busy with our work, you don't want to add on to more stress to us. And especially, mom, you're always like constantly thinking about our needs and don't want to inconvenience us, don't want to burden us in, in all sorts of aspects. My biggest fear is not knowing uh, what you're struggling with and and not being, not, not being there when we could have offered any form of emotional or or even physical support that that we would want to be there and help and, and talk to you. Mm. So that's that. Okay, okay. I, I, I will think... definitely try to share more. But I get that uh, Coco could it very well for me. Uh, thanks, Coco. Thanks, thanks for sharing that touching moment. Actually, this is even more I, I'm really happy that we're doing this session. I really love it because I think, mom, you should never think that you are burdening us. I think you are very, you you are like that, you know. You always want to, you you loved us too much, you know. But and and uh, of course that. <laughs> so I think, um, you shouldn't feel that because we would we we have overtly told you that we want to know what's going on in your mind all the time, and that's what keeps our family tight bond, tightly knit, and everything. And uh, I think, the more I, I mean, this is a personal thing the more I actually read about uh, religion, Buddhism, principle, some of it, I, the more I actually see where you're coming from, mom. And I think that it's, it's, it's such a beauty that there, there's a, there is a possibility of, of balancing, you know, learning to let go of attachments, yet living life to the fullest. I think I, I love that part mm. about that. And, uh, and that's also one thing, I mean, if I make, as I'm a, uh, from my, my profession at least, it, it pains my heart actually to see a lot of times in, in hospitals, uh, a lot of uh, senior citizens, not even senior citizens, people who are dying or approaching their end of life, their biggest problem is how like what you said, fang kai, they cannot let go. You know, they're so attached and they didn't take the time when they were healthy to actually express what they actually felt, what were their worries, what they, you know, what about their children, about their love, uh, their spouses and everything. And when they're approaching that and they cannot express themselves properly, they feel they cannot go in peace, you know. So I think it's always good to always say this out loud whenever, even when you're healthy and able-bodied and all the time. I think that is the one thing I learned from my job you know, from seeing all this and it really pains them because they can't say goodbye properly and peacefully. And I think, mom, you should also not worry too much about us. It's it, There's always not enough, right? When you are young, you think that, oh, will we get a tertiary education? Will we have a good job? I mean, even, uh, you know, personally, I feel like even me, right? I always look at death every day 
And I also remind myself of the mortality for myself, even when I'm young. And I tell myself, you know, you be ready when one day it will suddenly come and you will not be able to care for yourself. It can happen even if you're young. So I try to tell myself every day that. So I try to change how I live according to that as well. So um, don't worry about us because we have to accept that this is just, I, I, I tell myself, this is just life. We cannot control it. We can only do with whatever we have every day and be grateful for no matter how many years we have. Even 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, it's fine by me. I actually told myself that I'm already very helpful, ha happy with what I have this life already. I cannot ask for more. Whatever is given to me, easier said than done, the next day is totally a bonus. I really believe and try to stick true to it because that's how I want to live my life from you know, every day. Yeah. 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 I just want to share that. Uh, you and Shirin give me different kinds of worries. So for you, uh, I don't really worry much because you are maybe because you're a guy. So only accept that that traumatic traumatic incident that I really worry about you. But the rest, I know you will get over it. For Shirin, uh, initially I I I don't know how 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 it works between me and her. So so I worry a lot about her because she is a uh, oh because you are the one you are one person that when you're worried about something you will share with us but Sharin doesn't Sharin only will share with us when the problem is solved if the problem is not solved she will keep to herself just like me you are more like daddy I, she is more like me so so you I don't really worry about. but now I know I learned how to cope with not worrying for her already because I tell myself she will she she will do it she will solve the problem one day it's just that she don't want to tell me now that's all so now I stop worrying for her also so I worry less really and then one thing I know is uh, there's one idiom in Chinese uh, so soon and sun shall. why I keep on contemplating on this because when the moment comes it's like it's it's normal already you you know that it you uh that it, it's like that already so if you don't think about it every day, then people will say you're 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 so pessimistic, uh, you're so what uh, there's one word about they say about Buddhism that Buddhism is a what uh, uh a pessimist think, uh, nihilistic. Uh, so it is not, you know, actually actually I believe that uh what Buddha thought is to tell us to get used to the things that you will face later. So you won't have sudden shock that oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, so uh, girl, though, and then another thing I want to ask you all: Do you all worry that I worry too much about you? Yes. Oh. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, I do. I, I, I think do. less less so in the past, probably year or, or two. Yeah. Okay. But, like. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I just want you to know, mom, that uh, I mean, the traumatic incident, I mean, all the anxiety that I have, I think we just have to accept that challenges and uh, this kind of things, ups and downs will definitely come in our life and there's no way to control about it. But uh, just rest in the fact and rest, I mean, don't be assured that we are equipped well enough with this, with, with some understanding with our, that we will face it with the best way we can. So do not worry about us because that is our life. Our, that is our destiny to walk. You know, the Rooney has a path. I have my path to walk and we are, I believe, we have what is already necessary that is educated from uh, taught taught on from you and dad that we know what our values are and priorities in life. So I think don't worry too much. We will do our best and be a, uh, try to be our best uh, people in the community as we can and to ourselves as well. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. Okay, I'm not. I I have stopped learn to stop worrying. That didn't say. Yeah, I think that. <laughs> Uh, that is working on its extra curricular extra curricular activity. <laughs> <laughs> I think he fell asleep already. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. No, he's no, not. No, I think he's no, working no, on I'm something. Not. No, 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 no. I'm not, and I'm listening uh attentively to what you all just said. Uh, I have different. Uh, I'm gonna say certain things in a short while, but you, you can run first. You can run first. So I think this is a unique. I mean, this is an interesting thing, right? Because I think we are we are we are, we are quite close to each other. So this is what parents with children feel about aging this is i guess one of the big chunk of worry i guess right so i wonder if you have other friends or colleagues uh, or peers who do not have children you know what is their attachment i wonder what are their fears are you know that sort of thing so there's another whole different group that we are missing out as well another segment right you know that 
I, I guess someday we might want to ask different people, yeah, or our uh, aunts, uncle, or anyone, our family, some friends, you know, who have different worries from what we just mentioned, right? Yeah, I think there's several different categories, people who, uh, people without children, and also perhaps certain families who, where these kind of conversations are not um, a norm in the family, so... Yeah, like like what you said, mom and dad. So I think Akong Ama, Kong Kong Popo, do they even talk about this with you? I don't know. I, I doubt it. What do you think? Is, is it? Was it ever discussed? No, I I think for their generation, I don't know whether they use it as a taboo or something. They don't talk about it. But our, in our family, our immediate family, we do talk about it, of course. But their generation, I don't think they are so open. Frankly speaking, uh, initially and to a certain extent now, I'm very scared of death. All right. Uh, what's going to happen? Uh, when we die and then uh, we're not going to be able to breathe and where we go etc so as I get more and more involved in Buddhism etc and I'm trying to learn mindfulness etc I feel that uh, then I get more confidence in myself and how to face it lah, I suppose yeah, because you see people dying you know, uh, they, are, they are short of breath they are breathing heavily you know, and, and then you see the eye leak, the, the eyes turn around then they are weak etc so it's very scary lah, you know? uh, and our time will come and and of course, if we are lucky, we go gracefully with dignity and we just go off like that. You know? And if you're not lucky, then you track on. I see people, even my, my close relative, my aunt bedridden for 10 years, 8 years, being being uh, spoon-fed or being liquid-fed. You know, tubes running over their nose with milk being poured in, being able, uh, not it, being bedridden at all and being cared for. You know? I'm sure they, they, they don't want to do that, but then but they have got to do they got to do because they they got to lead through to the end of their lives there's no euthanasia here in Malaysia for example so you need to live through your full life right so no. but there's something that we don't have luxury to choose but when time comes of course the lucky ones will go off in a in a manner of which it helps both parties and you are not so lucky then you got to go lah. so so I believe then 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 that what what kind of uh, gives me more confidence as get I get more involved in in Buddhism, is on the meditation. How do I prepare myself? How do I prepare my mind, etc.? How do I train my monkey mind not to be so worried over things? How to that, that is a big challenge, right? I think, uh, yeah, can we get back to that? I think, uh, regarding end of life preparation care, at least from a medical aspect, yeah, in Malaysia, I think we have a separate whole topic that's a huge topic I would love to talk about with you all. And uh, but I think, with what to pertaining to what you say, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I see you, you come up, you said a few times about uh, dying in dignity, with honor, that kind of thing. I, I personally, I don't quite like the term. I, I don't agree with it in the sense that I think there is no such thing. I don't know. I, you don't, I, I understand because I feel your fear as well, even at this age of, uh, you know, will I lose my independence, ability to communicate with others as I approach my end of life? So is does that mean losing dignity? I don't think so the more I see it because is there such a thing as a dignified death? I don't think so. I think a death is just a death. You know, it's just part and process, part and parcel of whatever you have to go through. And I like to quote one of my favorite teachers, Ajahn Brahm, who I think is very, uh, it, 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 it's close to my heart what he said. He said that when someone gets sick and someone's dying in the hospital, we always ask what's wrong? But nothing's wrong. People die. Babies die. Children die of diseases. Old people die. It's nothing is wrong. It's just nature. We are all part of nature. It's just that sometimes we feel very entitled to life, that we need more. We are entitled to more. That we think that something's going wrong, but nothing is going wrong. We fall sick, we die. That's it. I think death is it's a process. I I I I I strongly believe that personally at least. I agree. I agree. Girl, girl, you're going to say no, but I think uh yeah, I, I I agree, and then there's no such thing as a dignified death. I mean, death is death, and it's, it, it's end of life. But I think I I don't know whether where that is coming from is that that entire process, however long, and and you hope it's short, where you lose your independence and then you lose <laughs> your physical ability, and that process hopefully is a dignified one because I think we've we've all seen. Uh, perhaps even Akong's experience, like <clears throat> the last six months of Akong's life, where you yeah. sort of have your granddaughter or your daughter-in-law to clean up, uh, clean up after you, mm. bring you to the toilet, 
um, mm. do the wiping and all that. To, to him, it, it's a lot I see. to take as, as, as a I, grandfather, as a man of the family. I guess I misunderstood that uh, meaning of dignified, I guess. I think I, I see it as understanding it wrongly because I think I, it's more of a more preferred. If I had an option of dying, I guess, would I rather uh, I'd rather go in peacefully in my sleep, that sort of thing, right? Without having to drag on, depend on others. Yeah, I think that's what you mean. Yeah. Yes, I, I, sorry, I have difficulty in getting my unmute button just now. So basically, uh, I, maybe I have a wrong choice of words, when I, but, but by dignified, I mean is that uh, some people are lucky in the sense that they die in their sleep uh, or they just die off after a few days of sickness. Some are unlucky because they need to be bedridden, need to be taken care of. You know? And then when I say dignified in the sense that you, know, you don't have to trouble people, you don't have to kind of, uh, you know, you, you, you are bedridden, you, you cannot go to the toilet to yourself. You need people to go and take care of you, wash your body for you do, when you do business, etc. So you want to trouble people and you know, trouble people to do that, uh, which is in a way maybe disgusting, you know, but then but then you don't know how long you, you're going to live and you're going to carry on doing that until the end of the days and you don't know when you are end of the days. Right? But on the other hand, it need to find in the sense that you just go off without troubling people at all, you know dying asleep or you're just uh, not feeling well a few days, you know, then you just knock off like that. So that is what I meant. I think you got you got it right you know, on, on, on uh, my thinking of when you say dignified in that respect. Lah. Yeah. I think, can I just put a light spin to this heavy topic here? I think to quote one of our uh, quite humorous uncles, he was saying that there are also people who go uh, because they get a heart attack from winning 4D or Gunting. So it's shut. <laughs> Shock Kasi, <laughs> to quote him, shock Kasi, shock until die. Uh, I think that's also a good way to go, you know? <laughs> Which yeah. uncle is this? I think we have no consent to quote people's names here. So I think you know which uh, funny uncle was this, yeah. But he has no, a point, you know? I have an uncle which is the younger brother of my father, your grandfather, all right? Uh, si Chega, huh? So he's very lucky. He's a heavy go lucky guy. He went up the night before, he went for a drink with friends. You know, and he came back, heavy head, just slept, you know, and then he never woke up. You know, and we found that he was passed away at about noon the following morning, you know. So he had the best drink, you know, with the friends, and, and he's very lucky, you know, it goes out like that way, like, you know. He's happy, we're happy, everybody's happy for him. Like. Of course, we're not happy because we, we need to let him go, like. but then again, it's a graceful way. And the last act is that uh, he had enjoyed his drink. The, you know. I must Chilea. have a this. Sorry, I must have a disclaimer before you go on. <coughs> this podcast does not condone or promote drinking alcohol. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> mom, go ahead. <laughs> okay. No, I was thinking, I was thinking because taking care of uh, people, whether uh, old or young, the, the, the most, I would say, uh, difficult part is the cleaning up, the, uh, the, the, the cleaning up part. Uh. So I was wondering when, have if if two of you can afford it, will I rather you get someone to clean me up than you do it yourself? You know what I mean or not? Because again, the ego part. So I was, I mean, of course, if we cannot afford it, the children, if the children are around, they have to do the dirty job. But if the children can afford it, would I want to the children to hire somebody to take care of me of the cleaning part? But the feeding part, I don't mind. The feeding, that one, not not so, you know, you you know, what I mean or not? Yeah, I, I don't know about you, Coco, but it 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 might be easier said than done. Uh, but from my very brief um experience with Akong, right, um. In, in the last six months of Akong's life, and then uh, where I had to do the cleaning was only like a very short, a few weeks perhaps. Again, easier said than done. It depends on duration and all that. I, I don't know what it is, but... Uh, and, and also, it was at a time when I was having sinus issues. So every day when I'm going bringing him to the toilet and I do the wiping and I clean up the ham, the pampers and everything, I don't smell a thing because I have I, I have very serious sinus issue. But I the, the 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 point I wanted to share, and I don't think I've mentioned this to any one of you, is there's a sense of it, it was at a time where he couldn't communicate much already. But and I I, I don't know deep down whether he is still felt that it was embarrassing or not, but there was a very special bond oh, that I thought, yeah, that 
you again I don't know how he actually felt but I took it as you trust me enough that you are letting your granddaughter do this for you and I was happy to do it and and that 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 was a bond that I there's just something there about doing that that I was so happy with that there's there's just immense sense of gratitude if that makes sense so yeah, yeah if you I ask me now I would want to do it but yeah, I call yeah, I call the time he he didn't allow me to clean for him. He always said, wait for daddy to come back, wait for daddy to come back. The other parts, feeding him and all that, he's okay. But the cleaning part, he didn't allow me to do it for him. I think yeah. I Kong Kong. understand. I Kong Kong understand the situation because you're the daughter-in-law and of different sexes and he's a guy. You know, that's why uh, uh, he's more comfortable with me doing it. Lah. Uh, on many occasions, in private, he did apologize to me. He said, very sorry, got to trouble you. So, uh, and I said the logical thing to him, I said, it's okay, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, it's my duty to do that. And in fact, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity for me to do it because uh, there's a way I can earn marriage. Not because I'm doing any ulterior motive, but being a Buddhist, I think that's the only thing at best I can say that. You know? uh, that's it. You know? And he doesn't really want to trouble anybody at all. You know? And uh, he, he confidentially, he also said that, is there anything that you can give me, let me go. Let me take something, let me go. I say, no, 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 no. You've got to live through the throughout your, your lifespan and be short or long. And for him, it's actually pretty short. You know? uh, it's only two and a half months from the time he was diagnosed or first time he was hospitalized in his life uh, to the time he passed away. It's only about uh, two and a half months. So it didn't drag that long. Okay. He, he but but uh, I, I, I can feel, I can, sorry, I can feel that he has some sense of pride in him. So when, when, I, when I did it, uh, I, I want to do it with a lot of sensitivity so he doesn't feel embarrassed, etc. You know? And being you being a granddaughter and mommy being a daughter-in-law, I do understand his feelings that he does. You know, feeling is okay, but all these other things, I think uh, that's why uh, when, when people grow old, we got to understand their feelings, etc. You know? Even though he, 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 no, them. no. He, he did allow sharing it for him, right? But myself, no. Eventually. He rather, yeah. yeah. He yeah. rather soak, soak, soak in yeah, that. Yeah. that pile of shit than to let me clean it for him, you know. You rather soak in yeah. it and wait for daddy to come back after work. So so the pride part is very strong. So I, I, I yeah. hope I won't be like that part. La. I mean I, I don't, don't know. know. The thing is I don't know whether it's a pride or he really doesn't want to trouble you, you know. I I we I, I don't know. I don't know. And I all three of you have actually had the privilege to do that for him. And I don't have much regrets in life la, but I've always talked to Denise about this, that one of the regrets in my life, if any, is actually, I wish I had spent more time with him to care for what you all managed to do for him before his death. That is something that is, I I, I, I wish I could do more, you know? I And I would want to do <coughs> the same for Touchwood, any one of you, I mean, it needed. It's, it's, it's a privilege that I want to do because I see it as, when you are young, when you came uh, and I was born, you did that for me. So when I'm old, and when you're old, I do that for you. It's just, I think it's 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 a very natural, it's a love, a process of uh, it's a it's a essential. I think I, 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 it's a privilege, I think. Yeah. I think and it's gonna be hard. To, and, uh, I think it's gonna be hard to do all that, but I think I would want to do it. Lah. I, I mean I hope I'm yeah, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it's it's a it's a that act of service is a love language of choice. Yes. What does do, is this a problem in the hospital? Like guys don't want the female nurses to clean for them, or female don't want male. I'm sure there's no female male, male nurses take care la. It's more of female nurses cleaning up the male patients, right? No problem, right? Yeah. I hospital. mean, some people do have that problem. Some people don't even want their families to do it for some reason. So I think there's a lot of reasons that people don't want to. Uh, yeah, so it's hard to hard to put. A, it's just the loss of uh, independence that people don't like. And it could be pride thing. It could also be, yeah, yeah a lot of other factors la, that they don't want to burden. I think for that and Akong, I think Akong apologized to that. He felt that like he was a burden. But there's one thing I wanted to tell you again, that if the time comes, Touchwood, it is not a burden. 
okay, you have to let the guilt go away and say, you don't have to apologize for this. The same reason I didn't, never apologized to you all when I was young and you had to change my diaper, right? I don't apologize for that. So why would you need to apologize when you're old and sickly? There's no need to apologize. I just want you all to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh. like like I said, it's and, and, it's like like how you describe it. Sometimes it to us, you to you, it seems seem like a burden, but to us, it's it's a privilege. Of course, I can't say that we can guarantee that at every juncture, it's not practical yeah. to promise that you, every step of the way you can do it. There might be other physical limitations, but the idea that it, intention and desire is that we we want to be and, there, we want to be able yeah. to and, do that. And I also I also think that I anticipate that. Like, as a human, uh, sometimes when you're tired after work, that sort of thing. I think sometimes we might be frustrated. There will be negative emotions that will come. But I think we also have to be kind to ourselves and tell us, no, we are not bad people. We are not bad human beings. It's just that sometimes our emotions and the physical limitations get the best of us. So sometimes we might find it hard and frustrating to do all these things. But at the end of the day, it is still our duty and it's still something that we want to do eventually. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think be kind to ourselves also. I'm also telling myself, yeah, I mean, who likes to clean up, you know, sh shit and everything? It's not going to be pleasant, right? But it's it's an act of, it's an act of filial piety. It's an act of something that we want mm -hmm. innately to do. But uh, there might love be language. human. Yeah, love language. And I think to divert, divert a bit, I think, I, I think for Akong, right? Actually, I, I realized when he passed away, I had a delayed emotional response. I never cried. I never felt it when he passed away. But going, uh, Denise has seen me cry multiple times whenever I think of Akong and our family. Uh, even, uh, I didn't tell you, but I think a few days back, uh, we were having dinner and we were talking about religion and everything. And then Denise was asking me, what is your vision of heaven? I was thinking about it for a while, you know. Then it just came to my mind and I cried. I was crying nonstop. That my vision of heaven for me, what I want to have and, you know, I wish to have, it's actually, I vision it in my our old house in Tingkat Bukit. And it would just be a normal day. And that we would just be going out for lunch as a family. And I was asking Akong what he wanted to have, you know. Like, you know, like he always likes to try. He's a foodie, right? He likes to try this Nyongya Koe, this new shop, everything. And I just, it was just in my mind, you know, that that was heaven to me. And I would just want to go back with Ama, Akong and you all when we were younger and go have a nice meal and have a nice chat with him and everyone together and have a nice chat in the car. And that was to me, that, that came to my mind as heaven to me. So I told Denise that, you know what? Thanks for bringing it up because why, why do I keep thinking? Uh, I, I don't think about afterlife often because I feel like what if, it's as cliche as it is, what if he heaven is not what you're going to go to after you die? What if this life is your heaven? You know, <laughs> this is it, you know? So that was very touching for me. And I I, I know how I, I felt very, it was such a, uh, such a great moment. Emotional. I mean, emotional. It was sad. But at the same time, I felt happy of, you know, that I, I had the opportunity of growing up with Akong for so many years. You know, it can always be more. But like what Ajahn Brahm said, when you end a concert, you just say, oh, that's a great performance. I was so glad to be a part of the audience, to be in the audience, to enjoy such a great performance with such a great granddad, you know. You know, many people don't even have the chance of being close to their grandparents. and whatnot. I had that. So I'm grateful for it. I wish for more, but, well, be happy with what you have and move on and try to do the best. And of course, with that, I also like, wish I can I connect with Ama more other than showing her wrestling videos. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> like and Coco, I just want to add like you you were sharing just now how you felt one of your biggest regrets was not spending as much time with Akong as you want to. But I think it's with with any loved ones, I they will never be enough. We will always feel that it's never enough. That that that's always the case. And then, and I hope that you don't discount how much. And you and Akong has a very, very special relationship, a very special bond. And you bond. should never, yeah, very, very special bond. And you should never discount how much joy or happiness and in particular pride, I think, that you brought to Akong. Because he's so, so proud of you. 
Yeah. And yeah, yeah, Akong, and Akong, I remember once Akong like to sit at behind the table there reading. And then suddenly we saw him reading Ako Daddy Akoko's medical book. <laughs> yeah. Really? You know, I didn't know about I was just I was and, just writing all about this in my journal uh to yesterday actually before y'all called. Um, I actually I documented exactly that period which I remember because I was looking all around I lost my book my biochemistry book and I couldn't find it anywhere in the house and then I realised Akong was happily cheekily reading it behind at the garden you know I said, mm. <laughs> then he was finding it very interesting I, I, I really that is always in my mind you know yeah <laughs> sorry girl you continue and so and, and I just want to add uh, one more thing I think what we don't give you and that enough credit is the fact that um, the reason why Coco and I could have this relationship and this bond with our grandparents was because we grew up in the same house together with them. And that obviously came with a lot of other complications and, and inconvenience as well to both of you as parents, um, as husband and wife. It's it's not easy. And you all bore that, that the downside of it. And then we got to enjoy all the great side of growing up in the same household with our grandparents. So for that, I'm grateful. I am. Wow. Um, I think we've gone on quite a bit about aging. It's actually, we spoke on a bit more, uh, way more than uh, we, I, I was thinking of, right? But I think there's a lot more topics we intend to cover, but I think it's probably not going to be enough for this session alone. I think we have to probably do it uh, intermit I mean regularly in different sessions in this series called the aging series probably because I think it's such a beneficial talk don't you think that we are sharing our mm. personal experiences uh, emotional uh, there were a lot of emotional moments this episode as well but um, and I'm learning new things as well as the chemistry book thing I, I, I didn't know about that yeah biochemistry yeah. excuse me it was a... biochemistry biochemistry <laughs> such biochemistry. a but Shireen, uh, thanks a lot for summing up the whole thing. Uh, the package deal that uh, of all of us, uh, three generations living under the same roof, indeed it has its pros and cons. And I think you summarize that in a very well manner. You know? And I'm glad that, that uh, you appreciate and you really cherish the pros. Uh, but it comes with definitely with a package. Lah, plus, yeah. Thanks. Actually, is, we are quite lucky that... Uh, I, I am definitely pro talk open up and talk everything under the sun with my children. But not not every not every child will will respond like what you all do, you know. Of course the first initiative has to be by the parents. The parents have to be open enough to discuss all this with the children. But don't be surprised if some parents are not not it's not always the parents' fault that the family is not close knit. Sometimes the children are the one who don't want to open up to the parents. But we are quite lucky that both of you are open enough and and can can discuss all this with us, lah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I fully agree with my mom that uh, even though the parents initiated this, but then the children may not appreciate it, no, may not. But I suppose it's also a good karma that we are able to sing together and have the synergy, lah. Because both parties has got to, you know, to and, to, and, to to sing, yeah. Sorry, and likewise, also I think, uh, we we initiated this, and not many parents are also open enough to talk about this. So I think, uh, mm. what I gather from this is that we, for people who don't <clears throat> uh talk enough about it, maybe it's a nice place to start, but it also takes time to develop that close relationship, right? Mm. So I think, guys, I think uh, this went on for quite a bit. And uh, a lot of emotional moments and uh, actually very meaningful discussions uh, this time. Uh, but I think it's important for our journaling, uh, aside from the podcast itself, which is the main purpose of it, is to have our document uh, discussions uh, of our family recorded, right? So I think to sum, let's just probably uh, sum it all up to summarize whatever that we discussed today. I think perhaps everyone, we want to say something, uh, what's your takeaway or what you could summarize from what we discussed today? Can I say first? Uh, there's something yeah, new in our post podcast uh, that I, I never knew. Uh, in, that's, that's important. Uh. Even though we talk a lot, almost every day in our WhatsApp, but there's still new things that 
I learn, I get to know in this podcast. Thank you very much. Eddie? Yeah. That, that you are good. Yeah, that's great. And what was new? Sorry, I, I didn't catch mommy. What was new? Well, like, should she talk about heaven to Denise? But she, uh, when we talk, we, she never tell us, right? Mm. Sorry, I, I catch no ball just now. Now I know already. <laughs> like, no, me, I, 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 like me learning about the biochemistry textbook thing was new to me as well. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't know you didn't know about the story. It's I didn't know. I'm, I'm surprised that I didn't, I've not heard of this story. I heard about it. I heard about it. Okay, that perhaps uh, you want to summarize? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was a very good uh, session. It's not only for the podcast, but it's also a good, uh, as you say, journaling and also exchange of information and also exchange of feelings, you know, and the inept feelings that we have, some of them are already embedded in our heart, etc. So it's a very good session. You know, and uh, thanks for organizing this. I really appreciate it. It's an eye-opener. So. Thanks for joining us amidst your busy schedule, you know, extracurricular activities at Ruby <laughs> put it. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, thank you. And thanks, Uko, for, for putting a marker there to clarify what extracurricular activities is. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think to give that credit, you know, he's not uh, he's really contributed a lot to the community, you know. PKT, PJK, all deserving, you know. <laughs> please, 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 don't, don't, don't bring that up, don't bring that up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for me as well, I think that there's a lot of, like like mom said, despite how much conversations we, we have about whether it's there for about our memories, reminiscence of our times with grandparents, so that, that there's always new things that comes up whenever we have conversations like this. So that that, that to me is the value in this. And then we, we now have a record of that conversation. We've, we've had thousands of conversations before this, and, and now we have a record that we can go back and listen to uh, when we want. Uh, but I think for me, one, one of my takeaways today is there are a lot of times, no matter how close we are, we still make certain assumptions sometimes about or expectations that we have for ourselves or other people, especially today since we're talking about aging. Um, a lot of times we act on things because we assume this is what we want best for our children or I assume this is what uh, my parents want. Even for us who are so close, sometimes we make assumptions out of our care and love and wanting to make things convenient for, for each other. And the, the more conversations we have, like today, and then it, I think it's just a, a continuation of it, the more conversation we have, then the, the more we'll continue to be able to, to love each other better, essentially, in a way that's yeah. most productive. I think that that's a very good point, Rooney. I think the assumptions part is what sometimes causes a lot of conflict and annoyance, but actually, deep down, it's actually a love language, a different love language all mm. along. So, you know, it causes a lot of conflict at face value, but, you know, actually deeper down, it's all about, it's all about positive relationship and love that's underlying all this. I, I, that's a good message. Yeah, that. Yep. Uh, I, as much as I appreciate the fact that uh, Coco just now uh, clarified what is my extracurricular activities because I don't sound like bragging, but it came to also my realization again and also my appreciation to all the family members. Uh, here, I'm not patronizing. Because uh, as I spent many times, uh, many critical times, like to going to PBA, religious services, Chinese New Year, midnight service and everything, uh, I cannot be two places at one time. So when I spend my time like Chinese New Year Eve uh, over there doing prayers and everything, it will mean that you will come at the cost of not being together with the family. Uh, and by doing that, uh, there's an opportunity cost. Lah. So I'm very appreciative to Mami and two of you that uh, you are able to put up with all this. No, and uh, you put up at the same time appreciate the fact that I'm spending time over there but but being a dad over there of course no, be, uh, over here I, I mean is that uh, it, it could also be spent with the family on every Chinese New Year Eve but four hours after Chinese after union dinner I'm away in PBA every year no, instead of with the family so on that I feel not to say guilty but I feel a little bit bad in the sense that, but I, at the same time appreciative la, that my family understands that la, you know. No. I just, I mean, although we sometimes tease you about that, everything that, but I think 
uh, we are all very proud of you actually. Uh, we don't say this enough for the work that you actually do. Not many people, even myself, can be so selfless and you know, contribute so much of your time uh, to helping uh, doing all these activities. And I think it's uh, it's commendable, actually. I, I really respect that of you, actually. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. But it's also done, at the, uh, of course, as opportunity cost is the, the quality time that you spend the family, but then you know, it, it is what it is. It was what it was like so in the past. Yeah, but Thanks. We, we spent... We spend other days actually quality time with each other through all these calls as well. So I don't think there's any issue with that actually. You don't have the specific day to spend, you know. We you can spend any time of the day from in my opinion. So I think uh is it a good time to wrap it up? Yeah. So I think putting it all together, I think this aging uh topic is huge. It's gonna be a series of topics we're gonna talk about. Uh, it's gonna be a continuum of series in the future. Definitely more episodes on maybe on death, on medical aspect, or that sort of things, and legal aspect, maybe, yeah, Rooney. So, uh, but I think today we touch, it's a good introduction and definitely uh, into this topic. And uh, we will have more topics of this. And, um, yep, we will probably pick up where we left off in the next few, ep next uh, future episodes. Yeah, yep, sounds, sounds right. good. So thanks everyone uh, and uh, let's uh, have a good Sunday and a good week ahead everyone. Thank you. So perhaps Thank everyone you. can say it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that Whoa, has, that. That, uh, say what? So I think that has uh, trumped mom in the sense that he's having a, even a, having a more interesting background effect just now. Fireworks are behind, behind him. <laughs> uh, you see? And, who, said and, that and... Is, who said that is not tech savvy? <laughs> okay. 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 Why, uh, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Okay. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.